I'm Eric. And I'm Melissa. And today we're going to talk about our Atari 2600 collection. Mm. <laughs> now we a collection now. Yeah, well, we haven't done a collection video in a while. And um, it turns out now, that, and I never did the Atari because mm -hmm. I didn't think we had really a no, any noteworthy items. It's not like we have any rare things. But the Atari is getting a resurgence in the Cartridge Club. Yeah, and we have been collecting a bunch of Atari, um, in which Gaming Classic, you collected several. I mean, you always looked. You yeah, know, I always the looked a little, yeah. But now it's like, oh, Atari, Atari. Yeah. And then there was the big, uh, uh, what was that, the football draw? Oh, the draft thing, with the Musty? Draft? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Musty that you did. The Track and Toss set us up with a deal, and then we did this draft. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, the Atari collection has grown quite a bit, and so we thought with the the recent interest and and everything uh, that we might uh, we might do our, our collection for it finally. Right. So Let's see what uh, we got. there's a lot of stuff. I got a lot of games. So what we're gonna do is probably just talk about the games that meant something that that are the original set of games that I had mm -hmm. growing up, or games that I experienced or we experienced mm -hmm. uh, in the early years. Mm -hmm. And then um, yeah, yeah, we'll probably we'll just do a show of pictures. Of yeah, we'll probably just do a montage of all the others because there's too much to go through. But let's start with the hardware. So um, this is my original Atari 2600 system. Uh, I was very young. My folks bought it, brought it home. Uh, it was for, uh, it was actually for my father, and um, they brought it home, and we didn't really even know what it was. Uh, and so um, they eventually hooked it up, and 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 my dad never played it, and the kids got hooked, and it <laughs> became the kids. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I estimate we got this sometime in 1979, um, and it is a light sixer. It is a six model. It was still when it was called the Atari VCS. Uh, it says right on here, video computer system. And uh, this is the original one that we had, and it's solid. It still works. Mm -hmm. it still wow. works. So this is the only this is the only one I've got. Mm -hmm. I don't have any other models. Oh I my have, goodness, you have no backups. Well, I have no because I have a 7800, which will play Atari 2600 well, yeah, games. But. And I have a ColecoVision expansion module, which will play 2600 yeah, games. Yeah, but... And I have the Atari 5200 adapter for 2600 games, so... Yeah, it's all the same. I'd like to get a Vader. Yeah. Or something, or yeah. a Junior, even, mm -hmm. uh, the Atari 2600 Junior. Mm -hmm. But this is our original model, and I still use this to this day. You know um, what we should do is just... Do you think we can choose my brother and then get mine? And what? <laughs> I don't know. He's a collector now, I too. know. I know. These are our original good. joysticks? Maybe, maybe I'll have to play ring. <laughs> hey. I'm older, buddy. Yeah, you okay. could. You could try. All right, these are the original joysticks that came with it. Paddle controllers. Back in those days, they did not uh, cheap out on the uh, number of controllers that came with. Uh, they gave you at least two plus uh, an alternative uh, control scheme. And then for some reason, my folks bought these, these third party uh, Point Master. And these are the ones that we actually used most of the time. And I don't think any of these work anymore. Mm. They need to be reconditioned or something like that but so these are the joysticks we had these four joysticks i wonder and, if you think uh, i wonder pads. if there's like a special you know like a like some kind of like sale like you buy the atari and you get these joysticks no well or... it could but we didn't get these until months or years, oh, okay. years oh, later I you got them with it. Okay. maybe we had problems with these and so they well, bought they bought these also, but... well, yeah uh, when your friends came over you needed more no i mean there was only two player I mean, Warlords was four-player, but we only had the one paddle set, so... Anyway, and then later on, we got these with a game called Brain Games, which we'll talk about in a bit. The keypad controllers. Now, these are not the original ones, because um, one of my brothers took Brain Games and the keypad controllers and sold them. He just kind of grabbed them and sold them off, so... Uh, I rebought these at PRGE a couple years ago, so... We did have these controllers. It was just for the one game, Brain Games, that we had them for. And then recently, I grabbed um, a complete in box Star Master or Star Raiders, and it came with this little guy. And it's another 12 button controller. Um, I don't know if it's exactly like electronically or electrically equivalent to the keypad, these guys, but um, I should try that out. I, there's no reason why they couldn't be, just in a slightly different form factor. But uh, anyway, so this is the, first, the newest controller I've got and it is specifically for Star Raiders. So, that's it for the hardware. Nothing really, nothing really fancy. Um, so let's talk about the games. Okay. So, yeah. when we were growing up, this was our, we bought this uh, little uh, wood-grained 
cartridge holder, and this is where we had our games, and we actually, for the most part, kind of, kind of filled it up and then stopped, although there were a few extra games that we got uh, slightly later, which we'll talk about. But This is the one you had as a kid? You yeah, know? this is the original one I had as a kid, and then I found another one later, and then I found a third one later, so I bought them, and they, they can slide together, but they're, they're really tight, so I don't, I don't like to do that, because I think I'm going to break them. But this is the actual order that we had these games in. And uh, we'll just start with the first one. Of course, the label has come off, but it is combat, the pack-in game. Uh, not much to say about this. Everybody knows about combat, so I'm not really going to talk about that. Actually, I'm going to do it this way. Okay. I'll put the pictures up. Yeah. Uh, and then the two games that they bought with the system, uh, that they, they brought home with it, were bowling and uh, home run. And uh, at the time that they bought these, there were no picture labels, at least not that I knew of. And it sounds like my folks were thinking they were going to go for sports games. <laughs> uh, bowling, I think, is for my mom because was she was say. a bowler. And home run, probably for my dad because he was in the, you know, he's in the baseball. So. Yeah. Uh, but he never touched them. So. Hmm. And that was it for the longest time. We didn't, uh, didn't really care. The kids, you know, we'd play bowling or home run, but in combat we played a lot. But it was, you know, whatever. And then it wasn't until I saw, went to my neighbor's house and saw what was the, uh, what do you call it? Killer app, mm -hmm. Space Invaders. And I was blown away. Mm -hmm. And so I asked for it right away and we got it for Christmas. And uh, again, this is uh, a text label, so it was pretty early, um, but about 1980 probably. I think we got it, I forget which year we got this for Christmas, maybe 1980. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this really then kick-started, uh, re reignited the kids' interest, at mm -hmm. least, in Atari. And then, the very first game I ever bought, with my own money, was Missile Command. I don't know why or how I knew about this game, but I love this game. Mm -hmm. I, knew I, lo I knew I enjoyed it when I, I bought it. Uh, and this was at a time when there was, uh, you'd buy these Atari games, the, uh, the photo area at the local drugstore used to have the video games behind the counter. This was Jewel Osco, wow. which is a Chicago area yeah, drugstore. Yeah. Okay. So anybody who remembers those days, the drugstores would have the Atari games behind the counter. And I went and bought this <laughs> with my own money. I believe it was $22. Whoa. So that was a big deal for me at the yeah. time. That was a lot of money. Um, Coming in later, another one of my favorite games of all time. This was another Christmas gift, Frogger. Fantastic port. Mm -hmm. um, I used to play this on uh, beginner mode on the Atari, and then I went to the arcade thinking I was really hot stuff, oh, well, and I, I blew it. Because mm -hmm. in the beginner mode on this, you can scroll off the screen, but you can't do that on the uh, mm -hmm. arcade version. So that was a quick lesson in humility. Yeah. Uh, and at the same time I got Frogger, my brother got Pac-Man. Um, disappointing port, but it was better than nothing, mm -hmm. so we, we played this quite a bit. These are the four that we had too. We had Pac-Man, Frogger, Miss Clan, and Space Invaders oh. as well. Oh, sorry, you want to say something about them? No, I'm just saying those are the four that we had. I don't remember like when we got our Atari. It's, it must have been pretty early because we had an Atari and a ColecoVision. You know, so... <laughs> we were. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then we were at my cousin's and, you know, we played these and then we played these two too. All yeah, right. we'll talk we'll about, talk about those when we yeah. All right, so anything else on those? No. All right, so I'm gonna go to the next column. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then the next one was one of our first, or I guess it's our second third party, uh, Donkey Kong. Of course, Donkey Kong was a big deal at the arcades and I guess being a kid, we kinda, I didn't go to the arcade a lot, mm -hmm. but we kinda had our finger on the pulse of what was hot, so we knew Donkey Kong. Again, brought this home, Ooh, disappointing. It was a little <laughs> bit disappointing, like what the heck is this thing? Uh, not the best, but mm -hmm. uh, still played it a ton because it was better than having nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and then we got Brain Games. Now this is again, this is not the original version I had, I rebought this recently. Um, this I think was supposed to be a surprise or a gift. Oh. And I remember my dad saying, oh did you give them that game you bought? Oh. <laughs> and my mom's like, "Thank you know, thanks a lot. And so we kind of got it early. She pulled it out with uh, Brain Games and the keypad uh, controller. And so we, we used to play this quite a bit. It, I can't remember. There's some puzzle solving things and some Simon. I think there's a game like Simon where it'll do a tone or whatever and you gotta hit the right keypad. But uh, it was fun. Fun for a while. Interesting game. But then, mm, one of the all-time Atari greats my mm. brother got for uh, his birthday, Pitfall, of course, for the Activision, um, by Activision, 
Um, this was fantastic, and we, we played this a lot. And uh, um, this game probably had an effect on our yeah, non-game playing playtime too, where we would pretend we were a pitfall hair or whatever, <laughs> and uh, do some yeah. crazy stuff. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah, that was a good one. And then this was the first used game I ever bought. Oh um, I borrowed this from a neighbor, a different neighbor than we saw Space Invaders from, and I'll talk about this this neighbor, uh, literally uh, just directly next door. Uh, he had a bunch of Atari games, and so we used to see a bunch of Atari games or experience much to him, and uh, he, um, I don't know if he lent this to me first or, or what, but I liked it well enough that he sold it to me oh. uh, for $13. And I just, I, out of my allowance. So uh, I think this was his original copy and then he sold it to me. So Keystone Capers, uh, really liked this game and I bought, this was one I bought, used. Wow. Just loose, just bought it because I'm like, like way 13 bucks. Like retro scene, you know? Uh, yeah, like 1983. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wow. But uh, yeah, never, I, I have the manual now, but I didn't, uh, didn't mm -hmm. get it from the time. And then another Christmas came and went. Um, I got Circus Atari, which I really love. Uh, paddle controllers. Um, your clowns bouncing around trying to hit the balloons. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Really played this game quite a bit. And my brother got Haunted House, mm -hmm. which is another game that we, we played quite a bit. This game has an actual end. You can play it. You can complete the game and win. Mm -hmm. uh, it was probably one of the first ones we had that didn't just go on forever. Well, Pitfall doesn't, but we mm -hmm. never got far enough to beat that. Uh, so Haunted House was another one. And then finally, um, one of the last games of the original sets that we got... Uh, is Super Breakout. Now I got this for doing chores around the house and, and a bunch of stuff. And this is one of my favorites. Um, I love the I love the level where the, the lines just keep coming indefinitely. They just keep bouncing down, and you can get the ball going really fast, and uh, and, and it just goes nuts. They just keep they just keep coming. So Super Breakout was one of my favorite. I played play this one a lot. Yeah, this we play this one a lot too. I remember at my cousins we play it in the living room on the TV. Well, um, like for Easter's and her birthday, uh, we'd always go to my aunt's for Easter, and this was the cousin. And so we'd just be there playing, and all the other adults would be in the other room or downstairs and stuff, and we'd just be playing that game. Playing the Super Breakout? Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Good, good. If I had working, if my paddles worked, uh, yeah. paddle controls worked a little better, I'd definitely be uh, mm -hmm. playing this. All right, and so these are the, these are the 14 games that kind of we ended right before the crash mm -hmm. and we also moved at that time when we got a PC so a bunch of factors came together that just kind of that was kind of the end of the Atari uh, for us for a, a little while um, we lost some interest we had a PC and we, we moved and so we lost um, the basement where we would play oh, okay. it, it kind of well we got a playroom but mm -hmm. it, it was it, we kind of so so then moving on to the next set so some of these first few here are games that we got kind of Kind of just later, for the heck of it, uh, they just kind of came randomly. We, it was kind of past the age of the Atari, and we were already kind of losing interest in moving into PC games. But um, did you find these like on sale? Like, was that yeah, yeah. Too? We'll we'll talk about each yeah. one, and then some of them are just games that I experienced with my friends. So okay. I remember this one. This one came. This was a 1985 Christmas, and by 1985 we were done with Atari. But I guess my folks must have seen this on discount or whatever. Reactor. Um, we thought it was odd at the time to be getting an Atari game. It was like, Atari, no one, no one plays that anymore. This is actually quite a good game. Uh, really, uh, really, you're inside a nuclear reactor or something, and your goal is to bounce the subatomic particles into the walls of the reactor. Mm. And they bounce you around and something. Like that. It's quite fun. And then, um, then uh, Asteroids, we were at a KB or something, some toy store in the mall, and it was $2. Oh. And so we're like, well, for two dollars, what the heck? Yeah. You know, we could we can afford to get an Atari mm -hmm. game for two dollars, so we bought it, and then it stopped working, and then we went back and bought another one for two dollars, <laughs> and so, um, yeah, Asteroids. We had a lot of fun with this one too. We would just sit in the middle of the screen, and we could play until the score wrapped and wrapped and wrapped. Mm -hmm. um, next is ET. Mm. Now I think we were given this like a friend of my brother's just was like. I don't want this anymore, yeah, you can I have it. it. I mean, I think at this point, he might have had, I'm sure he had an NES or something like that, he didn't care. Mm -hmm. um, we actually played this a bunch, and uh, we didn't think anything of it. We certainly didn't think it was a bad game. Mm -hmm. I mean, falling in the pits and stuff was kind of boring, but compared to other Atari games, mm -hmm. we played this a bunch. 
because it was uh, it was new and, and it was all we had. We didn't have an NES or a Sega Master System yet. Qbert, I don't remember exactly how we got this. Either the same friend as ET, or we found this, or my brother would know, but I don't remember. And uh, we played the heck out of this too, because it's not a bad mm -hmm. version of Qbert, mm -hmm. and we didn't have anything else. I mean, we had a PC. But... And then the last game we got in the 80s, and it, until I started becoming a retro collector again, was Enduro. Now, the story of Enduro is that our another set of our neighbors, um, we were older now, so we were in the new house. They had Enduro, and they lent it to us right before we got our master system. And so we played a bunch of it uh, right before Christmas of 1988, uh, leading up to getting the master system. And so the next year, I'm like, I was feeling nostalgic. Uh, so in like 1989, so I, I asked for it for Christmas. And <laughs> in 1989, got this Atari cartridge for Christmas. Huh. Uh, wasn't too happy about the blue label, but uh, yeah. this is my original cartridge, so uh, that's why I've kept this. Because uh, the original label is like, you know, a standard Activision label, of, you know, uh, with the picture and everything like that. So I've seen the original label, maybe sometime I'll get it. So that, that ends the games that were ours um, right up until... I guess through the 80s, right up until sometime in the 2000s when we started buying them again, or my mm -hmm. brother bought a, a bunch and I started collecting again. So what I wanted to kind of do was talk about some of the other games that I experienced growing up. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, just sort of talk about our experience with that. Okay. And so I'm going to go back to the neighbor that I bought Kaboom from. Um, you mean... You uh, mean Keystone Capers, Keystone sorry. Keystone Capers, yeah. Uh, he had Adventure. And I remember him telling me how to win this game, and I memorized it. So I must have, it was wow. probably game one. I must have gone through and played by memorization mm -hmm. um, adventure. And if any of you follow me on Twitter, I officially won this That's right. on my own. I'm calling it the first official win, although I think I won it as a kid. Uh, adventure. So I'd like to play the uh, later game variants. But I remember borrowing this from my neighbor and, and playing through it. Um, another game that he showed me was Outlaw. Now, I've always uh, considered this game to have a yellow label, and this one's red, so he must have had a yellow label. Mm -hmm. um, have you seen the yellow label variant? Yeah. Elsewhere? Okay. But not for a price. I mean, I'll pay a buck for it, but mm -hmm. I've never seen it for a buck. So, um, uh, we played Outlaw. You know, you two guys just crossed the screen from each other, shooting each other. So, this was one um, that when I started recollecting games, I, you know, had on my list because I remembered it from a kid, being a kid. Um, and then he also had Riddle of the Sphinx. Uh, this was the first Magic game he I ever saw, and it's probably the first Magic game I ever bought. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really know too much about this game. I think it's a vertical scrolling, and you got to pick up items or avoid items as you're going up the screen. And it seemed really sophisticated mm -hmm. at the time. Um, so it's one of the first Magic games I bought, and it's, it comes from uh, experiencing it from my neighbor um, when we were little. What did he do with all his stuff? Probably sold it out of your eyes. Yeah. Or Another one he had was Superman. I think he told me how to play this one too. Um, I don't remember. Mm. But when I did buy this, I decided to sit down one day and just kind of play through it. Yeah. It took me a, it took me several minutes, which is not great time. Mm -hmm. I mean, the game can be beat in under a minute or something. But mm. I played through it and called it called it good. So Superman. Um, this is one that we actually saw from maybe another neighbor, or there used to be in a strip mall like a Sears mail order pickup. Hmm. It, all it was was like a pickup. For the catalog? Front end. Yeah, yeah, for like the catalog. And they had the Atari video, what do they call it, telegames, and it's called Target Fun. And so we used to go in there and just play the demo unit, and we thought it was great. And so. Later on when I was collecting games, I, I learned that it was called Air Sea Battle. I'm like, well, I'm going to get the Atari version. And so I grabbed Air Sea Battle because we had played it at a store mm -hmm. when we were kids. Mm -hmm. All right. And then these last four are ones that are from a friend. And actually, somebody who was in my grade, not my neighbor, though he was. He lived in our neighborhood. Um, I remember seeing at his place. Now, he had a ton of Atari uh, games. And we, we played a bunch of stuff at his house. And I remember he had the four switch. And I thought, well, this is weird. Well, Why'd they move the difficulty switches to the back? Because we had the six switcher. But one of the games I remember playing at his house a lot was Phoenix. Great shoot 'em up. I thought it was fantastic. You know, you could shoot the wings off. There was an end boss. Really fancy. Mm. And they they moved in weird patterns. I mean, compared to Space Invaders, yeah. this was really something. And we hadn't seen Demon Attack or anything like that. So 
I always remember Phoenix uh, from my childhood. It's one of the first games I bought when I was starting to collect again. Another one is Kaboom. This has got to be one of my all-time favorites. Certainly my favorite. I don't know, between this and Super Breakout, the paddle best. game. I mean, Super Breakout, Circus Atari, Kaboom, they're all fantastic. I love Kaboom. Uh, another one that I played at my uh, my friend's house and, um, of course, got right away when I uh, when I uh, started to play. This one my cousin had, too. And so yeah. it, was, it was like those two, like you said, with the paddles. Yeah, they're, they're like fantastic. In front, of, in front of that old school TV, right, which was like furniture, you know? TV? Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. one of those. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, the paddle games are one of the few, I mean, the best reasons to still have an Atari because mm -hmm. they have not, nothing has come close to those paddle games mm -hmm. with the original paddle controllers and the analog mm -hmm. control. So they're, they're great reasons to have an original Atari and um, I need to get my, uh, I need to get my, um, whoops, I need to get my uh, paddles refurbed. Yeah, um, you just have to have good ones. Yeah. Starmaster, this game, I, I still don't, I don't, this game is way too complicated. <laughs> I know he had it and he's flipping switches and using difficulty and like all the switches on the console did something and um, it's crazy and so I, I just remember it being like wow this is really an incredible game. I still don't understand how to play it uh, but I did buy it uh, pretty quick, uh, not quickly, I think I got it in the last couple of years um, and uh, I, I remembered it from a childhood so it's been on my, my, my list. Do you have the manual? I do now yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. So I could play it, I just I haven't. Mm -hmm. And then the last one, this is the most recent um, game I've got uh, from my youth mm -hmm. and I've wanted for a long time and I never wanted to buy because I could never find a good label, is Robot Tank. And it came in that bundle that it's Rocket Sauce mm -hmm. gave and so I immediately said I'll just, I'm just going to pull the trigger mm -hmm. out. None of the Activision labels are good anymore. Uh, Robot Tank is another fantastic game I remember from my youth. You know, it had weather effects, it had a, a radar. Really seemed sophisticated. Really seemed like a great game, um, and so uh, I've had this on my wish list for decades. Mm -hmm. Finally grabbed a copy of it. So, so those are 28, I guess, 28 games that kind of the big ones that affected me as my youth. The ones that we had growing up, the ones that I saw at neighbors or whatever, and then since that time we've collected uh, quite a few more. Um, yeah. I mean, here's your other. That sound interesting, yeah. Here's my yeah. other, uh, my third case. Uh, wood case. So uh, we'll do a quick montage of all of these and, and show you everything that's in the collection. Okay. But yeah. Cool. That's it. That's our Atari 2600 collection. All right. If you enjoyed the video, like us and subscribe.